day 9 our theme for today is mary most prudent mary was given the title of most prudent because she discerned what was truly good and always looked for the best way in achieving solutions for others she was careful and aware of all she said or did she silently reflected and asked god's help before she spoke or acted she took action when there was a threat to jesus's safety she and saint joseph both took their roles as guardians and protectors very seriously at this eucharistic celebration mary calls us to be guardians and protectors of our environment by being prudent in our choices and promoting a new lifestyle which chisels away all our selfish wants kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 31 on page 9 hymn number 31 kindly rise in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit my dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus today we are in the ninth day of the novena in preparation for the nativity of our blessed virgin mary normally all of us when we are invited for a birthday celebration we normally offer gifts to that person one day is left for us to think what best gift i can make a personal offering to mother mary mother mary may not need many things from us she may need a qualitative change she may need a change of behavior from us and she may need that we pray to jesus and walk the way of jesus as jesus has told us to walk to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mysteries let us call to mind our sins i confess to almighty god and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words in what i have done and what i have failed to do Through my, my fault, fault, my fault, through my fault, my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, therefore I ask, blessed Mary, O Virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Can you take your hymn books to hymn number four hundred and sixty-six? Hymn number four six six.
let us pray grant lord god that we your servants may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body and through the glorious intercession of blessed mary ever virgin may we be set free from present sorrow and en- and come to enjoy eternal happiness through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians I have been told as an undoubted fact that one of you is living with his father's wife This is a case of sexual immortality among you that must be unparalleled even among pagans How can you be so proud of yourselves You should be mourning a man who does a thing like this that ought to have been expelled from the community though i am far away in body i am with you in spirit and have already condemned the man who did this thing as if i were actually present When you are assembled together in the name of the Lord Jesus I am spiritually present with you Then with the power of our Lord Jesus he is to be handed over to Satan so that his sensual body may be destroyed and his spirit saved on the day of the Lord The pride that you take in yourselves is hardly to your credit You must know how even a small amount of yeast is enough to leaven all the dough So get rid of all the old yeast and make yourselves into completely new batch of bread unleavened as you are meant to be Christ our passover has been sacrificed let us celebrate the feast then by getting rid of all the old yeast of evil and wickedness having only the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god. god your response shall be are no god who loves evil no sinner is your guest the boastful shall not stand their ground before your face a response lead me lord in your justice you hate all who do evil you destroy all who lie the deceitful and blood thirsty man the lord detests our response lead me lord in your justice all those you protect shall be glad and ring out their joy you shelter them in your they rejoice those who love your name our response Lead me Lord in your justice Can you take your hymn books to hymn number 112 hymn number 112 can you rise
The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, Simon came to the temple and went and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God and he said, Now Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there, wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, You see this child? He is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. A digital congregation is something that is really going to take some getting used to. I would love to be there actually preaching to an actual congregation, especially in Don Bosco Burivli, which is like a second home to me. However, I'm not even making this journey all the way to Burivli to record the Mass over there. I'd like to say I'm simply practicing what I'm preaching. Since given the circumstances, traveling all the way to Burivli would be something very imprudent. And incidentally, the theme for today's liturgy is Mary Most Prudent. However, prudence is much more than simply this. Along with fortitude, temperance, and justice, prudence forms the group of cardinal virtues, which along with the theological virtues of love, faith, and hope, form seven goals, seven virtues that should be imbibed by any good Catholic. However, unlike the theological virtues, the cardinal virtues don't really have their origins in Catholic tradition. Instead, they were first mentioned by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato in his book Republic. Over there, he attributes each of these four qualities to different classes of people. And the class to which he attributes the virtue of prudence are the governing class or the class of rulers. He defines prudence as knowing what exactly to do in a given situation. In that context, prudence seems to be something that is a very human quality, something that we can bring about in our lives, something that we can imbibe within ourselves by working upon ourselves. However, Bishop Robert Barron would say that for us as Catholics, prudence is much more than something which is a human achievement. It necessarily needs to be complemented by the wisdom of God, by the presence of His Holy Spirit. Thus, for us as Catholics, prudence is human achievement or human effort complemented by the divine. And this is the kind of prudence that we find in our Blessed Mother. It is fitting that the Church holds her as a model for prudence, since she is the ruler of heaven and earth, much like the rulers to whom the virtue of prudence was attributed to by Plato. Definitely we would want to believe 
that humanly she was a very prudent person. She knew what had to be done humanly in a given situation. However, she definitely also allowed God to intervene and complement that human prudence that she had. And we see this in various instances in her life. For example, at the Annunciation, it would be extremely imprudent for her to accept to be pregnant even before marriage. Probably it would end with her being stoned to death. And yet because she was told by the angel that the Holy Spirit will descend upon her, that she will have the presence of God within herself, she accepted to conceive the Son of God. And thus began immediate salvation history. At the visitation, it would be imprudent for a person to undertake a journey across hill and country to visit a cousin. And yet she did it, knowing that it was probably the will of God. And therefore, when Elizabeth makes that confession of faith that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me, it would have definitely boosted her own faith as well. At the wedding feast at Cana, the most prudent thing to do when they ran out of wine would be probably to locate the local wine shop or someone who had extra stock of liquor and ask them for supplies. Instead, she approaches her son. Her son, who till at that point of time had not done anything extraordinary in his life. Thus, bringing about Jesus' first probably public miracle and kick-starting his public ministry. During the course of his public ministry as well, any prudent mother would have told her son to help out in the house, help his own family, or better still, even start his own family. Instead, she allowed her son to be a wandering preacher, and she was there with him because she knew how much he valued her presence and how much his presence meant to her. Even at the foot of the cross and before that during his passion, she could easily have prudently disowned her son who was condemned as a criminal. She wouldn't be the first mother in history to disown her son on account of being a criminal. But she didn't do that. She stood by her son, experienced the presence of God, and communicated that presence of God to those around her by consoling them. Post-death of Jesus, the most prudent thing for her to do was to sit at home, rebuild her life, and start afresh. Instead, she chose to be with the apostles, there in that upper room, and that's where you have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Thus we see throughout her life, Mary, while she may have been a humanly very prudent person, she reflected on her own human history and let the wisdom of God complement it. That was the kind of prudence she had. Definitely it would have taken a lot of effort on her part. It would have taken great humility to allow God to work in her life. And this is something we come to realize in today's gospel passage. The passage of the presentation where you have Simeon telling this young mother a whole bunch of prophecies that would have really confused her. She could have easily have dismissed them off by saying, this is just some old man just rambling off, not knowing what he is saying, probably half crazy. Instead, the end of this chapter, which is not part of this gospel, would tell us that Mary treasured all these things in her heart and pondered upon them. She treasured it in her heart, meant she reflected on what was going on in her life. And she pondered over it, meant she brought it to the Lord in prayer. My dear brothers and sisters, prudence today is the need of the hour. The present pandemic that we are facing today is a result of our human imprudence, our interference and exploitation of nature, which has brought about a virus 
that did not really exist earlier. There is no way we can call it an act of God. It is our imprudence that has not only brought about the pandemic, but also brought about its spread. Several COVID idiots are roaming around unnecessarily without taking the necessary precautions, throwing caution to the wind and not following instructions and guidelines. They are not people who are out there. So often I ask myself, am I doing the right thing by probably unnecessarily roaming around, especially without a mask? Do I need to order food or other things from outside and endanger not only myself, but also those living with me? Am I being prudent enough in stemming the spread of this pandemic? And it's not just this pandemic. Even before all this began, many of the problems that we are facing in nature and among human beings can simply be pinpointed to our human imprudence. Climate change, global warming, water shortage, pollution, species getting extinct, even things like poverty and hunger and starvation. These are all things that are a result of our imprudence. All these things are human problems. But probably where we really need to imbibe this prudence of our Blessed Mother is on the moral front. Often in life, we will be facing situations where we need to make a choice. We need to take a decision where our choices will be life altering, will decide the course of what happens in our future. And at such moments, it is but natural for us to probably reflect, bring together all our human knowledge, sometimes even the expertise of others, and undergo a discernment, a weighing of pros and cons before we make a decision. But probably what our Blessed Mother is inviting us to do is to allow God to intervene as well. While we use all our human resources she invites us to also bring it to the Lord in prayer so that his wisdom may complement our human virtue and thus help us be truly prudent persons. My dear brothers and sisters, we are on the eve of the birthday of our Blessed Mother and a birthday is usually a time when we offer a gift to the person celebrating their birthday. However, at any good birthday celebration, there are also several carry-home gifts. And therefore, while all our prayers during this Navina are a gift to our Blessed Mother, we can also ask her for a carry-home gift. And that gift could be the virtue of prudence. Therefore, during this Holy Eucharist, let us ask our Blessed Mother for this very special grace, that we too may be able to reflect on our own lives and allow it to be complemented by the wisdom of God, so that like her, we may be truly prudent persons. Persons who make the right choices in life, persons who like our Blessed Mother, grow in our love for God and grow closer to Him. The Prayer of the Faithful. Let our response be, Lord, listen to your children praying. All together, Lord, Lord listen, listen to your, your children praying. praying. For the universal church, that she may always continue to speak out against injustice, both to humans and to nature. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to your, your children, children praying. For the wealthy nations of the world, who wield economic and financial power, that they may change their ways of excessive consumerism and wastage, of resources. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to your, your children, children praying. praying. For the small-scale food production system, especially our farmers who are adversely affected by our undue exploitation of the environment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord listen, listen to your children, children praying. For each one of us, that we may educate ourselves in our responsibility towards the environment. Avoid the use of plastic, reduce water consumption and wastage, and adopt renewable sources of energy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord listen, listen to your children praying. Let us pray for our personal and community needs. Your response? Lord, Lord listen, listen to your children praying. We make all these prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you take your hymn books to hymn number 138, hymn number 138. Pray, brethren, that yours and my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may Lord, the Lord accept, accept the, the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints. And especially as we celebrate the Navina of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to earth's ends you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the loneliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 466, hymn number 466.
you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope oswald our bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with saint joseph a blessed spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope. and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the, for the kingdom, kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace peace be with you
Lamb of Lamb God, of God you, you take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 151, hymn number 151. The Anima Christi, prayer after the communion, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of Christ, inaberate me, water from the Christ side, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me, O good Jesus, hear me, within thy wounds, Hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come unto thee, that I may praise thee with thy saints and with thy angels forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech thee, O Lord, your mercy, that we may rejoice in this novena to the Blessed Virgin Mary, may by imitating her serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Novena Press, Day 9. Mary most prudent. O God, come to our O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mediatrix between God and mankind. Admirable Mary, by your birth you perfected the joy of all the children of Adam, who through you have received the author of grace, for he has made you the treasurer of all the graces which I imparted to us. May your birth be a special cause of joy to my soul by obtaining for me from God eternal salvation and all the graces necessary to obtain it. Dearest Mother, please pray for me and for these my intentions. Your response, 
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the municipal authorities and the workers who are entrusted with the responsibility of supplying water to our homes. Bless them that they may always think about the common good of all the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kindly pray for your personal intentions. Your response? Lord, hear our prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Your nativity, O Virgin Mother of God, was the herald of joy to the whole world, since from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our God who destroying the curse bestowed the blessing and confounding death rewarded us with life everlasting. Let us celebrate with joy the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary that she may intercede for us with our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Grant to us your servants we beseech you O Lord the gift of your heavenly grace that as our salvation was begun in the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin, so from this solemn festival of our nativity, may we obtain an increase of peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 335. Hymn number 335.